So I've tidied up the soldering a little bit. Um, I, <laughs> I watched that video back and I was a little bit embarrassed. The problem is there's a camera right here and, and that is what, I don't know, you can't quite see, let's zoom out a little bit. It is about that far away from, from the board. So uh, it does make it difficult to solder because I can't get my head right over the top. Uh, and you know, I'm getting older, so my eyesight's not brilliant. Anyway, I've tidied them up because I was a little bit embarrassed. So I, I, uh, I just took my time a little bit more. The, uh, the other side of the board, the other side of the little Wi-Fi board is a little tidier as well. I mean, it's a bit dirty where there's lots of burnt flux on there, but it looks okay. And um, we just need to uh, put some tape on it, I think. I don't think I've got any scissors. Oh, I've got a knife over there, that'll do. I've got some green PVC tape. Um, and that should be fairly good for insulating this thing. Let's just try it, ouch. I didn't just cut myself with the knife or anything. We're just gonna um, just wrap it with, uh, with tape and that should be insulated enough. I'm fairly happy that that can just flap around if it really wants to, it should be all right. Now, I needed to figure out a way of getting uh, an interface with the, the darn thing. So because I've taken up the USB port, I can't really plug stuff into it. And then I realized, oh, David, what's you mug? You've also got another Raspberry Pi. You can, you've got another Raspberry Pi Zero. You can program this one up, stick the, uh, the one of the Wi-Fi dongles in a USB hub thing and, and just sort it out yourself. Plug it into a mouse and keyboard and then we can just use this one. So that's what we've done. I've sorted this out. It's already uh, enabled with the Wi-Fi credentials. So that is done. And we're gonna take it upstairs now and plug it in. And we can watch as either the magic smoke comes out of something on this board or uh, it works perfectly, who knows? Um, and I've got a special little package on my computer, which means we can capture the display. Now I've installed the full Raspberry and Jesse pixel thing onto this board. You know, I don't need it for my application. I could just be, happily use the light version. However, if I do want to plug it into a display, then I like to have the, the GUI as well. Um, but it will be booting into the command line interface usually. Anyway, let's go upstairs and have a look. So it's time to plug this thing in. It's gonna show up on my screen, on the screen that you can see next to this webcam, because uh, we've got a little HDMI uh, plug here and I've got a capture card on my computer so we can see what the Raspberry Pi sees. And um, I had intended to use a pre-configured distribution. However, uh, it turns out that I don't have a matching USB uh, to Wi-Fi dongle. So we're just going to be using this one. And then I think we're going to use serial to interface with it. So which one's powering? Let's make sure we get it right. I think it's the far one. Okay. So as soon as I plug this in, something should happen. Okay. So we're seeing what the, the Pi is doing and it's going to go in through its uh, normal setup routine. If I just bring this down a little bit, we have to see a bit more of it. Um, so this is the first boot of the Pi and uh, you're seeing it in real time. It shouldn't take too long. I'm using the full GUI version uh, and the reason for that is so that you can see that it's connected to Wi-Fi. I can demonstrate it in serial, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to have the little um, uh, visual representation. So I tidied up the soldering so it looks a little nicer. It's just hidden under the board here. And once we get in, uh, I will, in fact, I can plug all the bits in now. Let's get ground in and our TX and RX. So this is, it's pretty easy to do. You just count three pins from the top edge of the board and then plug them in. One, two, three. So the third one is ground and then you've got TX and RX. There we go. And as long as there's enough pressure on those, uh, it'll hold together. So let's get a serial monitor open while it's loading up. And 
and it's probably, I don't know what com it is, let's find out. So you can see that we've got no internet connectivity there, but we're about to change that. So we're going to connect on COM4, actually I think you could probably see this, add window capture. So we're going to connect on COM4 here. So this is on my PC and it's uh, 115200 and we'll just connect via serial. And there's our little serial window. Oops. There we go. So the login is Pi and Raspberry. Now the first thing you want to do when you've plugged in a USB device and you're not sure if it's working, you need to LS USB. Now this is going to just list all the things connected to the USB. So let's find out what's there. And as you can see, we've got a uh, Rarlink Corp RT5370 wireless adapter. And that's the one we're going to be using. Now, what we need to do now is figure out how to connect to Wi-Fi. And there is a very simple uh, method to do this. Oh, it's a bit big, isn't it? Let's make that a little bit smaller. We need to find our network interfaces. So sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces. And this brings up our network interfaces. And we need to make sure we're, that we're configured for wireless and oh it looks like we're already importing the wa conf so we can edit that i think so let's exit that um no let's not save changes so instead we're going to do sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa which i was saying was wi-fi supplicant actually but it's actually wpa forward slash WPA so again, dot conf. I assume conf means configuration. Uh, and then we need to add in our Wi-Fi details here. So I've got them saved somewhere, but we'll just start writing this out. So it's network, ooh, network equals open bracket SSID equals uh, open thing about I don't remember what it is so we're gonna to have to load it up so my network details are TP dash link underscore 2 C E 4 4 and then we'll end that like no like that and then we need PSK equals and then our password which I will blur out and then we just need to save so we press control zero or O rather to write out the file and then we can exit the next thing we want to do uh, generally, the Raspberry Pi should detect that you've made some changes to the, um, the WPA supplicant file. Um, it's probably Wi-Fi something access, isn't it? Wi-Fi point access? I'm not sure. What we're going to do is we're going to reconfigure it anyway. So sudo WPA underscore CLI reconfigure. And that has reconfigured our thing. And we can check if that's worked with if config. Uh, wireless LAN zero and it has so you can see um, that it has uh, got some RX and TX bytes and if we do that same command again those bytes will have changed so it is communicating with the network so uh, all we need to do now is 
in fact, you can see it on the, on the desktop that it is connected to Wi-Fi, which is great. Um, and we can do, uh, let's do sudo apt get update. And you'll see it should be able to connect to the network. So fantastic, it works. Uh, I'm really pleased that it's in such a small form factor. We don't have to have a massive dongle hanging out the side of this thing. We don't, don't now need terminal. Uh, we can close that down. We'll never need to use that again. We can use SSH. In fact, no, we can't. In fact, control C. Um, we also need to um, edit the Raspberry Pi config. And I think we do that with sudo raspberry-config. Yes, there we go. So we've got our weird stuff here. And we need to go to advanced options. We need to go to, oh, in fact, overscan. Um, no, okay, we don't need that. So if we wanna go back into the GUI again, we'll get to see it fill the screen rather than have those black bars around it. Uh, in advanced options, oh no, it must be boot options actually. In boot options, we want to choose to start in the console. And, whoops. And under interface options, we need to enable SSH. So that will enable, okay. And we need to enable I squared C. Well, we don't need to, I'm going to. And is there anything else? Probably not. VNC, why not? Let's enable VNC. So unfortunately now you have to use real VNC to connect unless you uninstall that, which is installed by default. Uh, would I like to reboot now? Yes, I would. So we're going to lose the display, but it will pop back up again. And we'll certainly lose the serial link. Uh, but you should see it just boot to um, the command line interface instead, the CLI as it were. So that's essentially it. Um, thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any comments or if I've done something wrong, please do let me know. Um, I did say that um, I'd installed the GUI version, but we're just going to boot into the CLI, the com command line interface. However, if you really wanted to, you can just install the light version. I just like having the option available of um, starting the X server so that I can see stuff that's going on. So um, yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, it's behind the scenes time. So uh, what you didn't just see in that video was me making a big mistake, uh, which happened. And I didn't show it to you because I thought it ruined the flow of the video a bit. But it's important nonetheless. So um, you'll notice there's a different Wi-Fi adapter on this board. Um, this one didn't work. And the issue here is, so this was the first one that I soldered on. Then I've cut the video and put a different one on and then switched back in time. Whoops, switched back in time so you didn't see it. Anyway, so the problem is not all Wi-Fi adapters are alike. They might look very similar. They might both have this little black thing that goes on the end. They might all say the, uh, the same stuff on there. So 802.11n. They might also have the same red stuff around the outside of the USB bit. However, they all have their own different drivers or their own different chips on board. So the one that I'm using that works is a Realtek 7 eight, six something. Uh, I can't remember because it just works. The one that doesn't work and is a known problem with these boards is the Realtek 7601. Um, and it'll come up as RALink in your LUSB or LSUSB list USB devices. So avoid it. Um, what I should have done is not gone for a 99p cheap module. I should have gone for something where it had proven reviews of working out of the box with the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, solved it by taking it off and putting another one on after doing about four hours research on the web to try and figure out how to make it work. It turns out, you know, four hours of my time is not worth the four pounds it would take just to buy uh, a new one. Um, it's not a problem I could have solved easily. So 
I just dumped it. So I might revisit it, I've still got it, but it is worthless to me except in a Windows 10 machine. Um, so that's, or a Mac machine, I guess. Anyway, there's your sneak peek.